All right, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, as we are ripping in to a season preview of AFLW for 2024. Joining me on each and every episode of this season is the star of the show, as I'm just the host. It is Bryony Dawson. Bryony, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me, Alex. I'm very excited yeah. here today. I just have a quick question before we introduce the stats guy over <laughs> yeah. there. I saw a photo on Instagram this morning. <laughs> oh. Have you Carl Stefanovic this and not gone home from the season launch last night? I understand that I did wear this to the season launch yep. last night. It looks good, though. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. But I also had another gig that I had to go to. And I ended up staying at Crown last night oh. and um, I asked my partner to bring me a T-shirt so that I could be here. T-shirt and jocks. Yeah, perfect. And um, she bought me a white T-shirt. And then literally as she brought that in, I got the text message from oh. the producers being like, wear anything but a white top. <laughs> and I was like. One job. Well, yeah. I've got a bloody good jacket, yeah. so I'm going to wear that. Why not? Yeah. Never go full Stefanovic is the answer, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Definitely. And over there. Is the stats guy, Lee McCallion. He's pumped up because North Melbourne are very good. Oh, this is my favourite time of year. The AFLW starts. Let's forget about the AFL. North, where are we? 17th or something like that in the men's. Women's is where it's all at. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited. I love it. All right. So this episode is going to be split up into two parts. We are going to be going through all the teams, all 18 teams, basically thoughts, vibes, how they're going to go this season. We'll stop at halfway through the teams, except for Fremantle, because they'll be safe for the second show, as we will have Code Sports journalist Eliza Riley joining us to take us through the Perth teams. But make sure you get around us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up there, like and subscribe. Of course, social media accounts, AFLW Today on TikTok, Instagram, and AFLW Today AU on X. And wherever you get good podcasts, just search up AFL Today. It's all on the same feed, because if you want to get AFL Men's Finals Chat, it'll be there too. Yep. But let's get into it. Let's do this. A quick look. Vibes are high. I'm feeling it. I'm up and about. The season's been launched. The practice matches are done. We are, what, 10 days away from the season mm -hmm. starting. Very exciting, yeah. What, what have we got? Yeah, ten, what is it, 10 days? Yeah, yeah next Friday. Friday. Beautiful. Days? Yeah, yeah. yeah, not fire at all. Ten, no, whatever. <laughs> no, next next no. Friday night at North Sydney Oval. Great place to watch yeah. football and have a tin. <laughs> uh, but also, can I just get my one complaint out of the way? Go. Oh, the, oh, yeah, one complaint, sure. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, seen, I've been on too many shows with you to say you've never had one complaint. In <laughs> one of many. <laughs> we will never have a fair and equitable competition until all seven, uh, until all eighteen teams play each other once. I know we've got eleven games this year, but I just want to get that out of the way early. You sort of allow the allow some time for things <laughs> to grow. Okay, Rome wasn't built in a day. That's my true. Friend. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're not the most patient person. But I'll, I'll agree with you for this on on this one. I think. To make it fair and, yeah, the more games. There's 11 games is nothing. I think there's got to be a few more than that. But like Brian is saying, mm. you just got to take a bit of time. Maybe. I love your passion. I yeah. really yeah. love your passion yeah, for go. it. And everyone agrees with you. It just takes know, time I to get there. I know. I know. Okay? A couple of years. Anyway, new AFL GM, Emma Moore from NAB, senior executive, and she has awesome experience in building a brand. Speaking of brand that needs building, the dub. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I'm really excited yeah. about um, Emma vibes. coming. Yeah, I really do have <laughs> vibes. Um, I love Nicole. I thought she did a lot for, for AFLW for, for when it started. Um, and now it's time to take it to the next level. And I think Emma Moore is the person to do that. Uh, I've listened to her speak um, about the W and the plans that she has with it. And I was just like, totally agree. Let's go. Totally agree. Let's do it. So I can't wait to see what she does. So awesome. it chips in. Speaking of chips in, they'll be in the footies this season because... Yes. As always, the AFLW seems to be the guinea pig for something that they want to do in the men's because we will have the technology in the footies this year to see if a ball's been touched, if it's hit the post or crossed the goal line. Apparently, it doesn't go back to the arc. There's going to be a dude just on the uh, on the bench going, yeah, it's over the line. <laughs> well, they should, maybe there's just a little earpiece that just yeah. like zaps the umpire or something. Or like, like in the uh, EPL, they've just got the watch that just... Yeah. yeah. The, the umpire goes over and like watches the screen yeah, yeah, yeah. like... Yeah. 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 Okay, and then there's like some sort yeah. of flag. I can't wait for this to uh, work down at Frankston. It's going to be great. Yeah. I got, I got it'll feelings. Be, it'll be interesting to see. Like, I'm excited. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited for it too because it builds the drama a lot as well. Yeah. I love that sort of pause and you're seeing things go back and forth. Imagine a match looking. winner that's decided Ooh, by it. They're like, I can't wait. They're like, oh, wait, there's no Wi-Fi here. We've got we to <laughs> wait. We've got to wait for the connection to come back. So they've got wireless things to charge the footies no, I'm as guessing well. it's not Wi-Fi. That, that would yeah, be a Yeah, but there's like wireless chips to charge the footies at like breaks and stuff. This Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. This is going to get great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, gather around in Cairns. Who's in? Yes. Yep. yep. I'll, I'll be there. We'll go. Book yep. the tickets. Yeah. All right. Sweet. That Apparently easy. that's going to happen. Uh, Laura Kane has come out and said that they are looking at Cairns because there's games up at Kazali Stadium this year. And they're like, hey, 
they want to pay for it, we'll go there. It'd be pretty Great. nice. Mm. What about these ones? Yeah. yeah. These ones. Uh, all right, let's rip into the teams. Brisbane are our defending champions. The Western Bulldogs were the wooden spooners last year. We're going to run through this team by team. Three minutes on the clock. Spencer's behind the camera with the siren. And it's alphabetical order except for Fremantle because, you know, Eliza Riley's going to help us yeah. out. Yep. Let's start off with the Adelaide Crows. Woo! Last season, minor premiers, they were 9-1. and one. They lost a prelim to North by a point. This season, they have five home games as well as a showdown away game, and they travel interstate five times. A belted port in some match simulation, which everyone expected. This feels like a proving point, as you were saying before the show, for them this season because it's, what, the most years they've been without a grand final. Yeah, they're normally in it every year yeah. or every second year. Feels like it, yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah to, to not be in it, it yeah, they're going to be really hungry. To be the minor premiers and then not make it into the grand final mm. – um, <clears throat> and I know a lot of those players yeah. and they are, they're top level elite athletes mm. and to get that kind of disappointment, they're going to be yeah. stewing on that in the whole off season and they're going to be raring and ready to go. Yeah. They're just like an absolute powerhouse. They're just, like you said, I feel like they'd all be filthy that if they don't make a grand final, that's a loss for their season. Like yeah. they're like, oh, we've got a minor pre premiership, but AFLW, AFL, like sort of Australian sports, no one really cares about the minor premiership. You want the big, oh, the big no finish, the big grand final, obviously. Yeah. So they'll be filthy with yeah. that. No one cares if you finish first in the regular season. No way. In the flag, but no their best 2021 20, from last season, you'd say what, uh, Yvonne Bonner and Montana McKinnon are the only two that are that are missing? Yeah. Yep. And then they've brought in, uh, uh, what is it, the an Irish Irish gal, Amy Boyle Carr. What does she bring in? Speed. Speed, that's what the you alphabet. like. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Well, the yeah, the, the ABC. <laughs> ABC. I'm really excited to to see her um, have a crack. The, we yeah. know that the, the Gaelic footballers, they're known for their speed, mm. obviously, but just their aggression and their yeah. absolute, like, see ball, get ball. Yeah. You know just run I mean? through people. It's, yeah. it's so good to watch. I'm yeah. not standing in the way. No yeah. way. <laughs> uh, as a side note, Anne Hatchard rules has been kicking goals all preseason, yeah. and this is a Jess Waterhouse fan podcast, my girlfriend's favourite player in the AFLW. Oh, there you go. Yeah, love a Jess Waterhouse. Yeah. On and off the it's field, the she's mullet. great. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the mullet just flows and great TikTok <laughs> it's a, follow. It's a really like light, wispy mullet, isn't yeah. it? It's, yeah. It's nice and clean. It's not heavy. And it's, yeah, just, it's really got some nice air mm. to it. So, mm. I, no, I love them. <laughs> so, how are we thinking for Port Adelaide this season? Uh, you mean Adelaide, but yes. Port Adelaide, sorry. I was <laughs> yeah. looking at Port Adelaide. I was like, oh, we, and we've moved on. Yeah, we already have to pee. That was quick. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Good show's a quick show. Uh, thoughts and vibes for them this year? I think top four once again. Yeah. Oh, I was. I think I can lock in top two. Oh, I, I think they're the bench. Like them, and I can get into that later. But North are going to be the benchmark of the the two best teams. Adelaide are just always up there. They'll minor premiers. I'd be locking in top two. That's a fail if they uh, if they don't. Stats man, come I on would. <laughs> I would have to agree with yeah. with you, stats man. I think yeah. I'm. I'm. I think they'll be minor premiers again. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I think they've got the consistency. You know, a lot of uh, clubs in the off season try to get. Uh, a lot of their players, yeah. and that they definitely mm. did in this off season. But the players stay; they love it. Good culture, yeah, 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 yeah. It's really good. Um, so I think I think they're they're unbeatable. Yeah. They're one of my Oof. my um my favorites yeah. for the for the premiership. Okay. Nice. I'm gonna go with the vibes player for every team. Adelaide's vibe player, Zoe Prowse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really All good. Right. Can, I, can I give you one? Yeah. Can I give you one person to watch who's my absolute favorite player for Adelaide, and it's Rochelle Martin. Yeah, okay. okay. She is an absolute. Go get her. Yep. Um, she kind of reminds me of Gavin Wanganeen and the oh. way that he just used to like throw himself into every contest. Okay. And you see her Body go in yeah. and you see the ponytail go up <laughs> and you see she's an absolute powerhouse and I love watching her play. So it's going to be what? Oh, there's the sign. Oh, the the That's it's nice. Lighter. It's aggressive. I like it. Perfect timing. Let's move on to last season's premiers, the Brisbane Lions, who went seven and three. Came from behind to beat Stats Guys in North oh, in Melbourne. I was there. Yeah. Uh, they've got six games at home and they travel five times throughout the season. But there's a bunch of outs for the Lions coming into their premiership defense. Uh, Michaela Parga and Phoebe Monaghan. But a lot of depth that sort of has gone missing. Kate Luckins is back, though. Looked very good in the match sims, mm -hmm. I thought. Uh, Eleanor Hartle with played in the ruck, then in defense. I was like, this is a wicked hybrid that you mm -hmm. can do. It was against Richmond, albeit, but I was like, hmm. no, that Richmond might be too yeah. bad. I think that's that's a that's a bit, a bit of a fun one. Yeah, there's lots of lots of the rucks in there for W just stay in the ruck, but if yeah. you can play forward or back or anything like that, that's awesome. They're looking at a little bit more in the AFLW at the moment at getting players to be a little bit more hybrid yes. and having yeah. two two key positions. So I'm really, really interested to see that. Yes, Kate Luckins back back from having a baby. Yes, uh, oh, awesome. which is awesome. Awesome. Mm. So, yeah, getting your, your body back there is just awesome. That's, so, that's yeah. a great effort, yeah. It's an insane amount of work ethic to I be know. match fit as a 
professional after having a kid. Like, yeah, yeah, most of them do it. Uh, what well, they've brought in a bunch of academy kids to restock their death because up there they've just got just a bounty of players that they seemingly get yeah. each year. And Sinead Davison will probably slot it in their forward line. Yeah, I, and I think as well with with Brisbane, I know on paper it does look like there has been a lot of changes. Yeah, um, but their big names and their keys and their depth oh, and that kind of stuff, really good. they're all. Still there, and I think, yeah, all those academy players that they've brought in are going to be awesome, and you can really sort of stay at the top while you bring in all these new new players and get them up to that level while still maintaining that consistency. Yeah, it feels like a really well-run club, the way you just explained yeah. that. So, mm. yeah, they know what they're doing. They always find a way, don't they? They, they look mm-hmm. ready to roll off preseason. So yeah. I think a few people were doubting him before some of the <laughs> packy games, and then everyone's like, oh, they'll still be but really good. That like, feels yeah. like Brisbane everyone's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Brisbane. It's seemingly just like their men says, ah, oh, they'll be there. But yeah, like I whatever. saw a few ladder predictions that had them like sixth and seventh and eighth. I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. That's that's far too low. Yeah. Give us your prediction then, stats man. Oh, pretty, uh, I got a top four. I think they'll aim for top four. Uh, yeah, I've gone top two for some other teams, but I'll say top four for, yep. for Brisbane. I'm the same. Yep. Top four. They're a really grind hard mm. team. They yep. don't give up because they know the depth. They know their skill. Um, and I just think they fight until the yep. very end. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm with top four as well. It's really slightly boring. We've gone through two of our top four and top two <laughs> well, positions already. Two of the best teams no every year. Yeah. No, yeah. At all. there will be. There will be. Don't, don't worry and about pure that. vibes is Kate Lutkins once again because does it all. Yep. Yeah, I like it. All right, Carlton, last season, four and six, finished 12th. They have five games as a home team and they only travel interstate three times. So the draw That's is lucky. on their side. Mm. They beat the D's in match sim, which we'll get to the demons later. But <laughs> last mm. season, Carlton weren't great, let's be honest, yeah. and they struggled to keep their star players. And they went into the off season losing everything. Not mm. a great, not a great preseason to come back into going. Oh, that wasn't great. Yeah, mm. they they do lose. I think it's uh, Carlton. I can't remember the other team. They lo- lose a lot of players. I think Dogs is the other one. Yeah, they lose a lot of players each year. And I don't know. Probably not to do with the culture or anything because I've got no idea on the inside walls. But the fact that they yeah, lose a lot of players isn't helping them take that next step to, to the final. So it's a bit of a worry. Mm. Yeah, they do need a little bit of um, consistency mm. and, and continuity. It is a really good club culture yes. um, at Carlton. I've I've done a lot of um, work down there with them and there know a go. lot of the players. And and why is everyone leaving then? I think I think <laughs> it's the same reasons, with, yeah. with every club. You get into sport and elite yeah. sport because you're a competitive person. Yes, you're also you really win. good at yeah. it. And if you're not winning. Mm. You got to go, yeah. you know, okay. and so I think I think that is that's the reason why I I I want Carlton to be really really good, but you know they 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 did get gutted um, a little bit in the preseason as well. Like not keeping Lalawifi in the back line was um, mm. huge for me. I mean she's she's injured now, she's done an ACL, yeah. so yeah, that's, you know that's ugh. brutal, isn't it? Oh, mm. that broke my heart. Mm. It absolutely broke my heart. But. Um, yeah, I mean they've 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 got some other good players in. Um, Lila Keck, I think he's going to be um, really good. Um, she's one of the top draft picks, came in at number seven, so she'll go into the midfield or a small forward role, which I'm really looking forward to seeing how yep. she goes there. Very nice. So they look as if they're going to base their game on a lot of pressure. Now we were lucky enough to do a uh, content day with yes. Keely Shirah and Abby McKay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Awesome people. So kind of also rooting for them. Don't have a lot of hope for Carlton though, but no, very yeah. nice people, very silky <laughs> skills as well. Just from that day, we we'll spent kicking around the footy like, oh yeah, this is like what elite football is like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Yasmin Dersma, good pickup. Yeah, running yeah, off absolutely. halfback, a bit of pace, and can deliver the football. She yeah. played a bit of mid and forward for Port a little bit, yeah. but then yeah, I think her spot is halfback, especially driving Carlton forward. I think she'll be really fun to watch. Yeah, where are we feeling them this year? Ah, uh, <sighs> definitely outside the eight, but um. I'm, can I just say the same as last time? Twelfth. I think sure. they're not going to be. They're not going to be. Oh, actually, no. I might even go a bit lower than that. Maybe thirteenth, fourteenth, because uh, I think they're not going to improve. But they're not anywhere near the like the bottom four. Okay. So I'll say just above that. But you could you could say oh, you could no. say a bit Why lower. Why do we have to agree? Oh, uh, we have to agree. No, no, no. I do, I do. I like even last season. I know they got hit with a few injuries last mm. season as mm. well, which was really disappointing and frustrating for them. So I get that. Um, but. I always want them to be better than the results that they produce. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it around that, okay, that, okay. that 12, 13, 14. I'm 12 to 15. Oh, yeah. we just saw the same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's a sign. Vibes, Yasmin Dersma. Yeah, nice. Collingwood, last season, 5-5, five and five, finished 11th. They have six home games. And in a shock, Collingwood has a good draw because they only have to travel three times. What a shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you've been talking about an AFL will, today so much. And then now you're going to talk about an AFL. I will take w. this hate. Everywhere. <laughs> um, 
I want one of the games I went to and it sticks out in my memory was when they got absolutely belted by Richmond in the last game of the season at Victoria Park. Yeah. That wasn't great. I was like, oh, your season was on the line here and you've absolutely turned it up. So I know Victoria Park, great place to watch footy. Absolutely. Uh, they went 0-2 in the preseason, but there's been a bit going on in the offseason. They had their head of strength and conditioning leave a month ago, mm-hmm. only started in February. Not ideal. Uh, Aisling Sheridan is staying in Ireland due to personal reasons. So again, bit going off there. And then you look at their preseason games. Uh, I thought Imogen Barnett's ready to go. Yeah, nice. Um, so, uh, Sabrina Frederick had the most hit outs yeah, in the comp last year. Yeah, and she's a beast. She, there was a lot of people jet. saying, oh, she dropped off, which she did a little bit. Uh, she was at Richmond. At and, Richmond. Yeah, yeah, things like that. She, she was still good, but not at her best. And then last year, she had the most hit outs in the comp. And her and Bree Davy are like, like, I reckon that's going to be really fun to watch together. I was I was really happy with her season mm. last year because she did cop a lot of flack. Yeah, she, she, she is, did, yeah. She's such a good player. Mm. And I think at Richmond, she just didn't get to um, – you know, expand and grow. I no. think as she wanted to, They've and got I a think few at ruck Collingwood, well, yeah. she is mm. she's in her place. She's in her zone. One of those that, r- players that can turn into a cult hero at Collingwood. A hundred percent. She already then, did last year, I reckon. Yeah. And as my, I'm an Essendon supporter, so like I love to hate Collingwood. <laughs> yeah. But those players are amazing. Mm. Oh no, we encourage the so, hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're so good. Like Brie Davy and Ruby Slater. Yeah. Like oh, they're just yeah, they're, yeah. they're incredible, and I'm really happy to see. Um, Ruby back this season. Yeah. I know she was devastated with that injury last year. Yeah. Um, so I just want to see her with her confidence up um, and playing some really good footy, which I know she's really passionate. Absolutely. I thought they were all right in their preseason. Like, uh, even though they've lost the team, I was like, okay, there's signs of life here. There's a bit to go off. As you said, Ruby Schleichler's back and stats guys thrown in. There's a lot of younger players that are going to get games. So ideally that's some quick ball movement going forward. Yeah, I think well. they'll be really yeah, quick. A bit different to last year. They're a bit stagnant and things like that. So I think they'll yeah. be a fun, a fun team to watch compared yep. to last year. Uh, yeah. Where are we having them? Uh, am I going first? Uh, I really wanted to fit him in my finals because I think their midfield, like being healthy, yeah. as uh, Bryony said, but I'm going to say ninth or tenth. Ninth. I'll say yeah. ninth. Just just outside finals because I, I really wanted to put them in the finals, but I don't know if I can fit them in. Yep. I think I'm going to put them in finals. Oh, I don't mind yeah. that. I, I was tempted. I was tempted. I'm, I'm going to put them low, like, yeah. like eight. Eight, yeah, I don't yeah. mind that. Eight. Yeah. I yep. can see them between seven and nine, but yep. I want yeah. them to be. I was about to say. Yeah, I want them to be there. It could be like last last season. They have that to win that final game to get in, and that could be finishing 10th or 7th. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I am as well. And the vibe play, it's quite clearly Ruby Slashler now that she's back. Nice. Easy vibes. There's the some slush. There's some teams here that are easy vibe players, and then there's others you've, you've got to think about. So for the next team, Essendon. Here we Last go. Last season, they were six and four. They finished seventh, lost in an elimination final in the most Essendon thing ever. <laughs> got to get the digs in. Uh, five home games, technically six. They've got uh, four interstate travel games, including Darwin for the Dreamtime game. Yeah. They are the home team there. That's going to be That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. Maybe we fly Stats guy up there. Yeah, I'm down, uh, I'm, I'm down to fly anyway. Let's, let's, go. <laughs> yeah. let's go. So they lost to Hawthorne in their first practice match and then Hawthorne smashed Sydney, so that doesn't look too bad. Come on, take us through Essendon. This is your team. We need you to go through <laughs> well, we're this. We're lucky we've got a timer. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is why I bought in the uh, bought in the siren. Um, yeah, I I think they they they're looking stronger and stronger every year. Like, um, I love their coach Natalie Wood. I think she's yeah. a really mm-hmm. um strong footy brain. Um, and I think that she's got the smarts to really get the team where it is. Um, the huge players in there, Paige Scott, Maddie Press Barkas, Bonnie Too Good, Georgia D, Dario Bannister, like they're all really, really stars. Um, absolute superstars. Mm-hmm. And I think that they're, they're only gonna um they're only gonna build and have you know, um Maddie Gay's um come in this season. Yep. I think that's gonna offer um a lot of great leadership and experience as well. So Definitely. I think that those those top players are really gonna help be able to bring up um the rest of the list. Can they fix their inaccuracy in front of goal though? It's yeah, it's not horrible. I just I just saw some people talk about it in yeah. preseason. It's not horrible. It's not horrible. Like, yeah, they but how do you win games of footy stuff? Yeah, you gotta keep yeah. it with the big sticks, so I get that. But I think I think they can. They've got a lot of like decent goal kickers. They just need to, yeah, straighten up a little bit. Yep. Agree. Yeah. All right. Where do we have them? Finals again? Absolutely. Six yeah. to eight. I've got them at. That yeah, I was gonna say yeah, I was gonna say fifth or sixth. I think they can yeah, improve on last year. What was last year? You was... reckon they can get up to fifth? May oh uh, I think they I'll can say get... sixth. Uh yeah, yeah why not? Why not? Eight, I'll say right? yeah, fifth fifth or sixth. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I think they can get into the top four if things go there. Oh, I don't know really? about top four, but top four, four. Yeah. Okay, That's a I big love jump. that. That's like big... I love that. Yeah. From you, <laughs> yeah. But I need I need some reasoning. Or we've got 
fix Do you up. reckon it's Brisbane, Adelaide, North, Essendon? Bomb rays. Stop it. Yeah. No, nah, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> there's, yeah, I don't I've know got that. them getting up there because I just think finishing up, some, fixing up some accuracy in front of goals, I think Bonnie Too Good could just come out there. She'd be like, hey, I'm actually the best player in this thing. Mm. Watch me go. Clearly, the vibes player is Bonnie Too Good. Yes. There is no idea. <laughs> when we did the shoot with her, uh, that was, she was so funny. Bonnie Too shoot. Good immediately yeah. understood the assignment. Yeah. Give crap to stats guy. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, that, that did happen a fair bit. Uh, I, I didn't mention as well. I really yeah. like Steph Wales in yeah. the ruck. Yeah. I had her in my AFLW fantasy last year, and yeah. she tore it up. She had 19 disposals, seven clearances uh, against Geelong and Apraki last week. So I was yeah. like, that, that's awesome. She's going to be an extra midfielder in there for the for the Dons. I hate that I'm getting a good good vibe from Essendon. Like, I hate this. <laughs> yeah, so same. I, yeah, I hate Essendon. As more a than Sydney anyone. Swans fan, this is like my most hated thing ever. <laughs> I hope they do finish. Top four. I don't know about oh, that. I <laughs> it. It's a big call. It's a big call. If, if <laughs> I've predicted it and it happens, I'm I'm cheering. And if it doesn't, it's like, oh, well, that's Essendon for you. Uh, there, there you go. <laughs> so top four for Essendon. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. Geelong, six and four last season. They lost in a prelim to the Lions. They came from six to make the prelim. Five home games. They travel interstate three times. I'm hitting it off the top. Georgie Prasparkas could be my favorite non-Sydney division player. <laughs> Sydney division. Oh yeah, God. I could have a non-Sydney division there. <laughs> yeah, she's, we, she's awesome. Yeah, but there's an argument going on here. Yeah, we had that. What was it? Uh, who's better, Georgie or Maddie? I'm going Georgie. Sticking team Maddie Georgie. Maddie Prasparkas by far. <laughs> we have a, it came down to it. If they had to like throw down. Oh, I, no, yeah. If I'm there was a fight, about I'm, a fight. I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not talking about like full fight. I'm just talking about like if the if footy. The, if footy. <laughs> if you really had to get in there. Yeah, but if I want someone to win the game, I reckon I'm going Georgia. Georgia also wears, Are you? Yeah. Georgia also wears the long sleeve, the hoops. So I like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a, a big sign, sign of a classy player. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the long sleeve. So it's I also, get it. She's also the clear vibe player from this, so we can skip straight over that. But yeah, could be that. I like Geelong. It's typical of just them as a as a conglomerate. They're going to be thereabouts once again. Yeah. It's, yeah. Do they have that uh, extra gear in them? <sighs> Deep breaths. It's a clear no. No. <laughs> I think, yeah. It, it, oh, you go. I, I'm coming from previous seasons where I look at the list and I go, this is a great team. Mm. Yeah. This is a great team. And then they don't perform as a great team. And and there's there's – Reasons why, you know, like injury. Any yep. teams that can have the least amount of injuries, especially in, the in such season, a short season, it yeah. stuffs you up, doesn't That's it? That's yeah. it. You mm. get like one little ingrown toenail, and you're out for the season. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, hey, what happens, yeah. How, do you, how do we That's limit a bad that? Manny Petty stats, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, so yeah, I I think that they really do um, have the capability to take it to that that next level. Okay. Um, and I reckon we can see them up in that that middle range of the top mm. eight. Yeah. That's got to take us through some players. Uh, yeah, well, I wrote down Kate Kenny. Uh, they really love her down at Geelong. Uh, yeah. Irish uh, Gaelic skills. They were literally like, she was doing stuff we didn't even know that was possible. Like this, I think there was a few solos in there, like little little kicks to herself, which is pretty cool as an uh, Irish Gaelic player. Uh, I, I like Geelong. I think they got a bit lucky to make a prelim. There was a couple of uh, games where the other team uh, just missed a lot of yeah, goals and then they sort of just fell over the line. Yeah. So I don't think they can improve, but they'll be around. They'll be in the finals because they did really well. Yeah. But I don't think they can improve from that around that sixth, seventh position just because, yeah, they got a little bit lucky to make it all the way. They, yeah. As, uh, yeah, as Bryony said, yeah, I think just the, the uh, other point I was going to make, there's going to lift their contested ball. A lot of players on the outside. There's just a few more players need to get in and under in the midfield and, uh, yeah, win the contested ball. Mm, I don't yeah. mind it. I have them finishing fifth eighth. They'll be in the finals, but I yeah. don't think they can win the flag. Yeah. I okay. Agree. Where have you got them, Bronny? Uh yeah, in that that middle yeah, range. That, same that, same thing, yeah. I yeah, I reckon sort of yeah, fifth to fifth to seventh, I reckon. Mm, yeah. yeah. Don't mind that. Let's go to the Gold Coast Suns. This is the successful team in that franchise. Six, three, and one last season. They were fifth, and they got absolutely belted by the Swans in an elimination that was final. Crazy, yeah. That was great. Uh <laughs> they have five home games and they travel four times away. Shout out to soon to be friend of the show, I'm assuming, because her brother's been on the show, yes. Charlie Robottom. Mm. Number one draft pick and tackling runs in the family. Yeah. Love and, it. And she has just produced for them like season yeah. after season. Oh, yeah. You know, she's she's really was Superstar. worth the pick. Mm. I, I don't know how much they paid for her, but enough. worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever she wants. Whatever she wants. <laughs> Whatever she wants. Yeah. She wants to diet coke, get it for yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Early call will be club champion this year after being runner up last year. Okay. Oh, what's your brother? Yeah. There you go. Uh they struggled defensively at times last season, like mm. especially that elimination final is the one that sticks out to me. They were up against an undermanned Swans, and they just got smashed. Yeah, off the they park. were a bit small in defence, and then uh, they've got Katie Lynch and Charlotte Wilson now as key defenders. Yep. I think that's going to help them dramatically because, like as you said, that was the the main area where they were struggling. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. Also giving Cloma like three metres of space anytime she was near the footy. Well, she you. creates her own space, <laughs> yeah. I reckon, but she's pretty, she's pretty quick. Yeah. But they did a good job like to to get to that uh, well, that uh having that home final, a disappointing yeah. way to end, but it is something that they can completely build on again this season yeah. and be in that that five to eight once yeah. again. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, I, I, I really like them. Um, they've had a busy trade period, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that they've sort of ended up on top. Um, after that trade period, agree, yeah. so yeah, I reckon uh, yeah, middle middle of the top eight again. Yeah, yeah, not top four, but definitely yeah, bottom part of the eight. I'll agree with that one. Easy. We're pretty, we're, we're, we're on the same page with a lot I'm, of these. I'm waiting for some big calls to come out here. <laughs> I feel like you said Essendon top four. That's a big call. I yeah, yeah so. that was pretty big, and I was happy with it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah there we go. Yeah. Vi player is Lucy Single. Mm. Yep. Because really uh, Charlie Robottom would have been obvious. Can't do obvious for every team. Okay. Lucy Single. Don't All right. mind it. All right. Let's get to the big, big sound. The GWS Giants, who went 2-8 and eight last year. They have got three home games, plus one in Sydney in a derby at Henson Park. They travel interstate seven times. Two of those are Wait, home what? games at Canberra. Oh, so it's right. five interstate. Tra- but traveling interstate to Canberra is still an absolute pain in the backside. <laughs> Being in Canberra, I heard, is the pain in the yeah, backside. Yeah, like just, yeah, just going to Canberra in general. Is that what the vibe is? <laughs> the vibe of Canberra Sorry, is... Sorry, Canberra. Yeah, if you're watching from Canberra. No, sorry, Peter Harvey. <laughs> We've been <laughs> saying for a long time, stop playing games in Canberra. Yeah. It's not good. Uh, that's all right. What's the deal with this club, though? I have serious concerns about them coming into the season. They have been belted in both of their preseason games. It doesn't seem to be any stars in their lineup. Oh, uh, there's a couple. per average, last season, they considered the highest score per game. Yeah. It's not... There's There is... A v- very big lack of vibes coming out of this club. Yes, I absolutely agree. Um, and you know they th- they did get a few a few good players in, um, but I still I don't think enough to boost the list uh, yeah. enough yeah. to make any significant changes this season. Um, and I think I think it's going to be a case of really just trying to do the really basic things really well, yeah. which we're, we're trying to move away from in the AFLW because we've been here long enough now and we need to get into more strategy and movement mm. of the ball and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I think they're, they're going to be back to basics. I also think with GWS, given where AFLW is at now, trying to get players to GWS is yeah. very hard giving cost of given cost of living in Sydney yeah, yeah that's greater hard. western yeah. th- where they are based out yeah. is in the middle of nowhere in Sydney like, I've, I've lived in Sydney for 15 years it is very hard to live in and if you're not a top line player who's on the very good money yeah. living in Sydney is very hard so you're not going to attract those players who are okay like a Carlton and Essendon mm. but would be a great recruit for a GWS yeah. until there's more money in the salary cap to throw around I feel like the Giants may struggle unless they draft really, really well. That's actually a really mm. good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Well I think that some of the young players are really good. You've got yeah. Tani Evans yeah. as a beast out of defense. Yeah. Yeah, you've got absolutely. Zali Goldsworthy. I think you're going to talk about her yeah, as well. Like, she's she's a, she's already a, up yeah. there like with one of their best players. But so. if, yeah, if she can go to that next level mm. this this season, they'll be able to win a couple of games just off the back of I performances think, yeah. from her. I think like first half or first three quarters of the season, they'll be like, oh, like they'll be really struggling. And then they might finish yeah. strong because they've sort of built a bit of more, yeah. bit more chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Zara Goldsworthy is absolutely the vibe. She's yeah. the key to this team this yeah. season. absolutely. All right, Hawthorne oh, Hawks. Where, are, we, where well, are they finishing? Do you want to do that? Uh, 17th or 18th. <laughs> oh, geez. I, actually, I was probably going to say that. Yeah. Oh, I was going to go 16th, same as last year because, I don't know, it's a hard one. Yeah. Definitely in the bottom few. Yeah, I, I'm agreeing there. Mm. Okay, cool. I'd love to be surprised though. Yeah. yeah. You know? They, they could be a fun team. Like they had a few games last year where randomly they like scored some big scores. I'm like, oh. When, you, right. when you've got no expectation on you, I yeah, think there's an true. opportunity to try some really the different old, things. The old throw the magnets around, let them play. Throw the magnets, throw the magnets around, around yeah. Alex. <laughs> throw them. Oh, we haven't oh, had a siren right. in a while. Three minutes on There was a bit of attitude on that one, actually. <laughs> Spencer's <laughs> loving the power. All right, Hawthorne Hawks. Last season they went 3-7, and seven, finishing 14th. Uh, four home games. They've only got to go interstate twice, well, technically three, because they do have a home game at Kazali Stadium. They seem like they've come into this season improving. They beat yeah. Essendon in match sim. They've got a new coach who Stats Guy's pumped up about. Yes. Go on. Do me, oh, I can talk that about yeah, that. Sorry, I, you, I thought you were going to keep talking. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Webster, who he's uh, helped Brisbane to two AFRW flags as a midfield coach. They are they were like over them. And there's been about five articles on their website just going, we love Daniel Webster. Yeah. And then a few other people have written about him. And yeah, big raps to him. And everyone's really liking him and to take him to the next level. So yeah, Daniel Webster. Cool. They like him. Uh, so what do we think there with their midfield? They showed a bit of pace in their preseason games. Yeah. I wrote down just a lot of their young players. I think 
uh, they've got the best young core. Like, okay. oh, maybe not the young core overall, but just the young players coming through. There's so many. You got Emily Bates, Lucas Rod, uh, Jasmine Fleming. I think they're just all going to be really good in the midfield. Yeah, they're fun and, to watch. And Casey Sheriff's in. Yes, Casey Sheriff. Uh, yeah. Eliza West. Oh, so they. So many. Eliza West just came in. Yeah, yeah. Dude, these guys are gonna. They're gonna be fun. They'll be oh, so fun. They're gonna be really good. Oh, I'm gonna have to hate Hawthorne again because they're already doing <laughs> they're this. They're very fun in the men. They're doing yeah. this. At, they're doing this at the moment in. In the men's comp, and now if they do this, I'm just like, oh, I hate them. <laughs> yeah. I hate them winning everything. <laughs> yeah, I think um, you're an I, Essendon fan. You've got to hate them. I, I understand that, and I do. I it's hard in the just women's. Like the hate, the hate is harder in. Yeah. It's harder in the women's because yeah. everyone is awesome. Mm. Yeah, and it's just it's so They're good people. Yeah, um, I think Hawthorne is the team to watch this season. Yeah, I think Daniel Webster. I know he's been trying to get into the the W for a while. Yep, and. Um, I think that he's really going to try and uh, prove himself and bring a lot, a lot of footy smarts in there, and it's they're going to they're going to really take the game on, and I think we're going to see uh, some really exciting footy, and all of these players in here, that depth in that list, are really going to step up, and we're going to get some wow factor. Okay. Yep, I agree. I know. It's, 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 a bit crazy. it's exciting. They're yeah, the one yeah. I'm most excited about. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. So vibes are high at Hawthorne. Jasmine Fleming is the vibe player on the wing or inside the mids. Can do it both. Yep. Can't wait. Yeah. Like that. All right, that is it for our first half of the season preview because in the second half we'll be starting off with Fremantle getting a gun journalist Eliza Riley in who is pumped up for the teams over in WA. Stats guy, before we finish off, okay. we need to get your season prediction, your premier, best and fairest, leading goal kicker, and we may as well throw the spoon in there. Oh, the spoon? I'll start with the spoon. I'll just go West Coast. I know that uh, I do... You're about to get punched. I know. I do love Daisy Pierce, but I just am really worried about West Coast. It could be out of West Coast in Jedi, so that's the spoon. Okay. I'm going to go biased here, being a North fan. I'm so annoyed I'm not in the second half of the show and I get to talk about North. So I'll have to be back on later in the year. May have been North. a plan by yeah, myself. Maybe, yeah, I could have uh, gone too long on that. But North Melbourne, I think they're the best all-around team. Most tall forwards, just so many tall forwards. Great game plan. So that's my premiers. League B and F. Uh, a lot of people would go Jasmine Garner. I'm not going to go too biased and go all my predictions North. I'll go Ebony Marinoff. I think she's very unlucky not to win a League B and F. 28 disposals and six clearances uh, last year. The most clearances in the comp. I just think she's an absolute freak and she's going to average close to 30 disposals. I reckon she can up that clearances mark as well. Leading goal kicker, no one's picked her really surprising, uh, Talia Randall. She finished third in the goal kicking last year, kicked four in preseason Thunder, last week. Thunder. Oh, did you say Talia Randall yeah. as well? Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> she's my favorite player at North. I know everyone would go Ghana, uh, Riddell, things like that. But yeah. Randall, her contested marking is the best in the comp. She's going to win the goal kicking this year. Bang. Yep. Stats guy with the hot takes coming in. All go. right. As said, that is done and dusted for the first half of the AFLW season preview. We're back on Friday to get into the second half of it where Brian and I will have our hot takes for the season and Eliza Riley as well. But make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel at AFL Today. Get around our social media accounts at AFLW Today. It's AFLW Today AU on X. And wherever you get a good podcast, just look up AFL Today. Thanks, Stats Guy. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right. We are done and dusted. Shout out to Geraldo behind the camera and Spence with her just outrageously aggressive siren honking <laughs> there. But we will catch you later in the week. Look after yourself. And remember, footy's back! Woo!